part three of my Gap Trail adventure. Bob Johnson here with PK and W Railroad coming at you with another video. This time, part three of my Gap Trail adventure, which was in October of 2019. It's now July of 2020, so it's taken me a long time to get these produced, but here it comes. Well, here we are starting day three. This is mile post 103. I just wanted to include this footage to show you one, how bucolic and perfect it was. You know, your normal ride is along the side of the river in the countryside. These little barriers, however, to prevent motorized vehicles from entering the trail were always kind of a little intimidating. Uh, always worried about catching a handlebar, although it never happened. Here we are post 104 and we're coming into a small town. And these little towns dotted the route. They were, and they're really charming, you know, 20, 30 houses, probably a max, you know, less than a hundred people. Uh, there's usually some support for the gap trail there, a store, that sort of thing. In this case, there's a, um, a little bench for people to stop. There's a bike hanging over it, encouraging cyclists to stop. I think there was a little um, convenience store or something there, but that's about all there is in terms of commercial in this little town. And it just is really appealing. Uh, I'm sure time really slows down when you live in a little place like this. I probably couldn't stand it for more than a couple of months, but uh, I'd wanna have restaurants and stores and excitement speed but uh i don't know it just seems very uh very bucolic and attractive and some of these towns have bed and breakfast that serve the trail so they really do get some livelihood off the trail they have restaurants and cyclists who stop it for the night uh dine there so just really nice little towns along the way just uh wanted to reinforce what a great experience it is to ride the Gap Trail and how doable it is. You don't have to camp. Lots of uh, people, friendly people along the trail. So if you get an opportunity to ride the Gap Trail, I definitely think that you should take that opportunity. Now this next image is of the Pittsburgh and Lake Erie a post here. Just a reminder that that's what we are on. We're on the roadbed of Pittsburgh and Lake Erie. There's a depot in one of these small no-name towns, just a charming little structure. This is in Newton, beautiful depot and a restored combine car. A little further on, this steel box car from the Pittsburgh and Lake Erie, beautifully preserved. Great industries as you're getting closer to Pittsburgh, National Tube Company, great name, imminently modelable. And we're on the Braddock Road, the historic French and Indian War trail of Braddock and General Washington. Here's my obligatory drive-by, kind of a going away shot since I'm coming into Pittsburgh. I thought it would be interesting to film it in this way and in this orientation. Uh, crossing the river again, a lot of river crossings on a lot of bridges. If you don't know, there are 400 bridges in Pittsburgh, over 400 bridges in Pittsburgh, railroad, car, etc. So one of many here. This is just a little view off one of those bridges as I'm getting closer to Pittsburgh. This is actually part of the trip that I would cover on my training rides. Fascinating MOW equipment, very modelable, at least the gondola, flat car with the tank containers, and look at this very cool waffle sided box car that as it pulls into view, you'll see it's been modified for MOW service super cool modeling project right there. It's a place I've filmed before. There's a large pipe yard. And here coming into the picture, two small diesel switchers. Sorry about the wind noise, but I it's thought it would be nice to get a sense for what it was like as I was there by hearing the audio a little uh, including bridge. And then it was a breezy day. Over here you see track Y taking up a considerable amount of real estate trail. You can 
see the roller coasters from Kennywood there in the distance, so you know close to Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh at its finest. Heavy industry. Rail served. You would expect nothing less from the steel city but coil cars. Starting to get overcast, I was starting to worry about rain. It's a beautiful day. A few clouds scudding across. Cool. But I don't think it's going to rain. Trail access in Homestead and a hot metal car. You'd expect no less. And this is the hot metal bridge going across the Monongahela River, getting really close to Pittsburgh now. Hot metal bridge, I assume hot metal cars were coming across this bridge as part of an industrial operation. I'd love to know more about the history of that. Maybe somebody watching this video can fill me in. But the bridge itself, still in use as a railroad bridge on the as, I'm sorry, as an auto bridge on the right hand side is uh, really beautiful. Look at the filigree ironwork here. Just, uh, just a beautiful structure. Now getting into Pittsburgh, the markings on the trail got really bad just when you needed them to be really good. Uh, down here was the first instance of that where there's a fork in the road and there's a sign that says bike trail, but not the gap trail to the right. It just says a certain other bike trail, but it does say downtown. So. I know that's where I want to go. I know downtown is to my left. So although I slow down here with a little bit of uncertainty, I eventually selected the path to the right and went up over the bridge. This is at like three o'clock in the afternoon on a Friday, maybe a little bit earlier than that. And everybody's heading out of town um, already. So you can see the traffic there uh, to the front is uh, pretty thick, reminding me not only that it's Friday afternoon, but that yes, I am getting into Pittsburgh and getting into a major metropolitan area again. So I'm a little bit closer to downtown. You can see some of the buildings from the skyline up there in the distance and all these bridges going overhead, reminding me where I am. There were homeless people sleeping on benches. There were kids riding their bikes, uh, well, teenagers riding around on their bikes who seemed like they were bored and up to no good, but it was Pittsburgh. It's relatively safe. Down below, you can see a road looping under classic Pittsburgh uh, street arrangements, but at any rate, it was feeling like rain. Now I'm really getting close. Um, I'm heading down towards the point. I'm headed towards the confluence of the Monongahela and the Allegheny River, which forms the Ohio River. And this just shows you, you can hear me talking to a cyclist I met on the route there. Just he was commuting somewhere. But um, um, this just shows you the classic Pittsburgh, uh, the way the roads are all so tight together and interlaced amongst each other like a bowl of spaghetti, like an old classic uh, railroad layout, model railroad layout. So, but you can see I'm obviously getting close. There's uh, the buildings of the uh, Pittsburgh skyline over there to the right. So getting really close, but no signage. Just have a general idea of where I'm going. I'd only been to the confluence once, so here I am, definitely closer, and I guess I'll check my map. Um, at the end of the day, I couldn't really find exactly where I was, uh, so I took off, but my sense of direction paid off. Here I am at the confluence. I found the point, and I'm weaving through pedestrians, none of whom have ridden 150 miles on their bike to get here. I know I need to go through that little archway to the right there um, because there's a fountain right about at the confluence and that's where I'm headed. So getting really excited now. It's been a long three days. So it's exciting to be achieving your goals and getting towards the finish line of what it was really a cool trip, a really cool trip.
this is lit up at night and looks really great and it's, it's certainly a place you can go to at night it's relatively safe and it's uh it's lit up very nicely so i came through here and i could see the fountain ahead of me but obviously there's a round park between me and it so i had to go around the park i wish i'd scouted out the route a little bit better beforehand because i think if i'd gone that way to the right earlier it would have been better but here i found my way and just coming into view there it is there's the fountain at the confluence uh, unfortunately there were a bunch of stairs in between me and it and I ended up finding a little narrow ramp and having to walk my bike down it was kind of a pain in the neck but it was so great to uh, be here and to be celebrating I made it and here's the medallion showing that it's the great Allegheny Passage Terminus. I had indeed made it. Thanks for watching. Here are links to the other videos that I promised about the Gap Trail adventure. Please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. Bob Johnson with PKW Railroad signing off. Until next time, happy modeling.